Welcome back to my boot. Irfan here. Hope everyone is safe out there. I've got today with me the Realme 6, uh, which was just launched uh, with the 6i and the 6 Pro a couple of weeks ago. And I've got hands on the 8GB and 128GB version, which goes for about 210 US dollars. This one has quite a few noticeable upgrades from the Realme 5, like the main camera bumped up from 12 to 64 megapixels, the addition of 90 hz screen refresh rate, the all new MediaTek Helio G90T chipset and a bigger and higher quality screen. My experience with the Realme X2 Pro and 5 Pro was very good and I have high hopes for this one as well because it is eventually an upgrade of their mid-range variant. If gadget reviews, DIY projects and life hacks are your thing, then consider subscribing to my booth and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss out on any of the action. Now it comes in three variants, the 4, 6 and 8 GB RAM with different combinations of 64 and 128 GB storage. The box is very different, first of all, completely yellow with a big 6 and Realme 6 grinding all over. Um, I like the minimal style. As I mentioned before, this is the 8 GB, 128 GB version. You've got the specs highlights over here. Uh, these are all the major changes from its predecessor. I'll come to them in detail in a moment. Inside the box, we have some user manuals, a clear silicon cover and the phone. Now it comes in two colors, the Comet Blue and the Comet White, which is this one. Below that, we have a 30 watts WOOC fast charging brick and a Type-C cable and finally a SIM tray pin. The back is very similar to the X2 Pro's Lunar White, but it doesn't flaunt that same uh, dual color shine. This is more plain and simple. I like the 5 Pro's back more. The shiny polycarbonate is quite smudge friendly, but at the same time, it keeps the phone lightweight at about 190 grams and also pocket friendly. And I mean price wise. Apart from the Realme logo, the back also sports the 4 camera setup and a flash. It looks identical to the 5 Pro. The only difference is the main camera, which is up from 48 to 64 megapixels. The bottom has a 3.5 mm audio jack, speaker, charging port, and the microphone. The volume buttons are quite flush. SIM tray has two nano SIM slots and a dedicated micro SD card slot which can take up to 256 GB of additional storage. Now the chassis is made of aluminum and the front is Corning Gorilla Glass 3 which stays the same as its predecessor. The fingerprint sensor is missing from its usual spot but don't worry it's incorporated right here into the power button. And as usual the fingerprint recognition is super fast and accurate. There is also image based face recognition. It's quick and accurate and additionally there is brightness compensation which means when you're using it in dark the screen brightness will increase automatically to illuminate your face enough for it to be detected. The selfie camera is now an in-display punch hole camera. The display is a massive 6.5 inch Full HD Plus which is an upgrade from 720p HD display on the Realme 5 and this time the body to screen ratio has also been bumped up from 89 to 90.5%. Now this is a beautiful display with bright colors and sharp details. Realme has also ditched their usual uh, interface called Color OS for their own Realme UI running on Android 10. It is quite fluid with snappy responses. Honestly, quite similar to the Color OS with a couple of changes. One thing brought over from the Color OS is the game space, which allows games to get more power when playing to boost game performance by restricting background activity and other apps. They've also retained the smart sidebar which can be accessed by swiping from the edge of the bezel for quick functions. Uh, there's also a whole new app store apart from Google Play called App Market. One thing missing is gesture controls like iPhone which were there in both the X2 Pro and the 5 Pro. There's only the standard on-screen navigation buttons. Another upgrade here is the screen refresh frequency. This phone features a 90Hz screen refresh rate which was their selling point for the X2 Pro which is Realme's flagship model. Now they have this feature in their mid-range model which really says something about the direction Realme is headed in. In the cameras we have the Samsung 64 megapixels primary sensor, 8 megapixels ultra wide lens and then 2 megapixels portrait lens and the 2 megapixels macro camera. The primary 64 megapixels is impressive as usual, great detail in the pictures, natural looking color tones and fairly balanced sharpness shadows and highlights. You can zoom in a great deal into the picture and notice the image doesn't break apart easily. Even when you move out of the 64 megapixels mode, the same primary lens is being used but it takes smaller size pictures with not as much detail as the 64 megapixels one. Uh, but these are also pretty good, more importantly they don't cache up as much space. The wide angle camera 
well, I would say it is okay at best. The quality is definitely not as good as the primary camera, the colors are slightly faded, and the image is not sharp in general. In low light, you can switch to the dedicated Nightscape 2.0 mode, and yes, it does a great job. Even in the normal camera mode, it detects the scene as night and takes a picture accordingly, but the dedicated night mode does one better and can produce some great shots in dark. The wide angle wasn't very good to start with and in low light it's even having a harder time. Pictures are noisy, there's lack of details and once again the colors are off. And uh, it is the same story with or without the nightscape, not at all what I expected. You've also got the 2x, 5x and all the way up to 10x of hybrid zoom. Uh, it's quite decent just like the 5 Pro uh, and not just in uh, bright daylight, even in low light it was quite okay. Then you've got the portrait camera which is uh, able to capture some very decent bokeh portraits. Blur is set to 60 by default but you can play around with it. Finally we have the macro camera which can get as close as 4 centimeters to tiny objects and produce some uh, good looking detailed images. Videos can be recorded at uh, 720p, 1080p and 4K. Now the HD and Full HD can be recorded at 30 or 60 FPS but 4K I think is only at 30 FPS cause when you select 4K in the settings the option for 30 and 60 disappears. Later on I was proven right when I checked it on their website and it said 4K at 30 FPS only. Now the 1080p video at 60 FPS is very smooth but uh, the 4K not so much. There is also slow motion recording at 120 and 240 frames per second. Now while the 120 FPS looks great, the 240 seems to be simply 120 FPS digitally slowed down to 240 FPS. The front camera is 16 megapixels and just like the Realme 5 Pro, it has not disappointed. It can snap smooth pictures with crisp details. Bokeh portraits turn out amazing, natural looking skin tones, even in low lighting. Good job there. Now the processor is a step up from the Realme 5's Snapdragon 655, but compared to the Realme 5 Pro, it is not that much of an upgrade. The Realme 6 has a MediaTek Helio G90T octa-core clocked at 2.05 GHz compared to the Snapdragon 712 on Realme 5 Pro. Nevertheless, it is a powerful processor and also comes with an advantage in the form of its faster GPU, which gives it an upper hand when it comes to gaming. I did a benchmark test on Geekbench and got a multi-core score of 1682, just a tad below the Xiaomi Pocophone F1. It can stand up to intense gaming like PUBG and Asphalt 9 Legends. Both these heavy games seem to be running without a hiccup on high graphics settings. After about 15 minutes of playing, the phone started warming up a little bit, but luckily it didn't heat up beyond that point even when I kept playing. The dedicated game space can be accessed by swiping from the top corners of the screen to check on the CPU, GPU usage or to toggle settings like blocking calls and notifications or to start screen recording. Now I believe it's not always the very heavy games like PUBG or Asphalt that put a phone to its test. Sometimes it's simpler games but with a faster gameplay. That is why I also tested with Rodeo Stampede and Knife Hit. These games when played continuously can even give flagship phones a run for their money. And uh, you can see the Rodeo Stampede uh, session went well, uh, I didn't have any hiccups but with the Knife Hit, after a couple of levels you do see a little bit of lag in the gameplay. Nevertheless, for its range, it is definitely a beast and can handle quite heavy stuff. The battery is 4300 mAh which is a step down from 5000 mAh in the Realme 5. But it does come with a 30 w uh, WOOC fast charger which claims to get it from 0 to 100 in 1 hour and 5 minutes I think. But in my testing I found out it took an hour and 22 minutes which is not a very forgivable difference but on the brighter side it took about 33 minutes from 0 to 70. So quick top ups are a big plus point. It has a single speaker setup on the bottom. It is uh, quite loud but when it comes to clarity, I think the Realme 5 Pro was a bit better. All right, now to sum it up, this is a $200 phone which carries some flagship level features, uh, which is good news for the average consumer like me and you. Lightweight, a massive, stunning full HD plus display, fluent UI, 64 megapixels quad camera setup and a 16 megapixels front camera with real time face toning features, 90 hertz screen refresh rate, a decent chipset and fast charging, definitely a step up from its predecessor in many aspects.
I'll leave a link for uh, it in the description box below in case you want to check it out. That's it for now guys. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button below and share the video with your friends. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe to my booth for more gadget reviews, DIYs and life hacks. You can also follow me on Instagram and other social media. All the links are in the description box below. Click on the thumbnails to watch my other videos or check out my YouTube channel for more. Stay safe and thanks for watching.